in the last lecture, we discussed the various types of digital interfaces such as menu driven user interfaces, touch user interface, voice user interface and uh, many other types. And we also saw their advantages and disadvantages. Today we will discuss how can we plan and collect data and process it. So, today we will see some techniques for data gathering that are commonly used in interaction design uh, practices. Particularly data gathering is a central part of uh, discovering requirements of the users. Within the requirement activity data gathering is uh, conducted, but what is data that we are talking about? So, we will see and uh, uh, how we can collect this data and uh, what is the data that is relevant to us for our uh, study and further processing. So, we have data all around us, data can be expressed in numbers, uh, words, description, photos or any other uh, way which helps us understand the particular design and user needs and user behaviors as well. So, data can also be quantitative and qualitative. So, we will see these two types uh, in detail in the further slides. So, the broad goal of data collection or uh, for our purpose is to understand the user needs, behaviors and preferences. Now, data can be quantitative and qualitative uh, as we have also discussed earlier. So, for example, how many clicks are required to reach the customer care by the uh, user on a website. So, this will be an example of quantitative data. And when we say that what is the feedback of the user regarding the customer care uh, support, then that will be the qualitative data. So, it is important to know what techniques can be used and how useful and reliable uh, is the data that we are collecting. So, there are three main techniques for gathering data. They are interviews, questionnaires and observations. But before we begin the data collection process, so, there are five requirements or we can call them as uh, homework or key issues that require our attention. So, which are goal setting, identifying participants, the relationship between the data collector and the data provider, a triangulation and also pilot studies. So, the main reason for gathering data is to get information about the users, uh, their behaviors and their uh, reactions to technology. So, for example, which of the two icons here uh, with next step is easier for the users to use? So, there are many different reasons uh, for gathering data and before beginning it is important to set uh, specific goals for this exercise. Now, these goals will influence the nature of the data gathered uh, from the users and which data te uh, techniques uh, should be used and also which analysis to be performed. Goals and requirements need to be very clear and concise, so that uh, the data can be analyzed effectively. The second important uh, issue is the participant. So, the goal that we have developed for data gathering session will indicate the types of people from whom this data has to be gathered. Now, people who fit this requirement, they are called the population or uh, study population and the process. Uh, through which we select these participants in data gathering is called sampling. So, there are two types of sampling techniques, probability sampling and uh, non-probability sampling. So, in the probability sampling, the most commonly used approaches are uh, simple random sampling and stratified sampling. And in the non-probability sampling, uh, the most commonly used ones are convenience sampling, volunteer sampling. Uh, purposive sampling and uh, snowball sampling. So, uh, the first probability sampling technique, uh, simple random sampling uh, method, every member of the population has an equal chance of being included in the study. So, the sampling frame should include the overall population and to conduct this type of sampling, uh, sampling uh, method. So, uh, we can use tools like random uh, number generators or some other methods. 
So, we can understand this with an example that uh, if we requ require a simple random uh, you know uh, sample of students uh, in the mess food to see the quality of food, then we can assign the number to every uh, student in the database from 1 to example 800 and then use a random generator to uh, select 100 number of students for their feedback. In stratified sampling method, we divide the population into uh, subpopulation or strata who differ in some important uh, parameters. So, it allows us to get more accurate conclusions by ensuring that every subgroup is uh, uh, represented in the sample. To use this sampling method, we divide the population uh, like I said uh, into strata based on certain uh, characteristics which could be age, gender, uh, their uh, uh, designation, etc. So, based on the overall proportions of the population, we first calculate how many people should be sampled from each subgroup and then we use random sampling uh, method to select the sample from each subgroup. In a non-probability sample, uh, convenience sampling, they are selected based on non-criteria uh, basis and not every individual has a chance to be selected as compared to the probability sampling. So, these uh, are commonly used in exploratory and co uh, qualitative studies more often and the aim generally is to understand an initial understanding of a small or under researched population. So, convenience sample includes the individuals who happen to be uh, very accessible to the researcher. Uh, the, the first available primary data source can be used uh, by the researcher and uh, there may not be any other additional requirements. So, it is a very easy and inexpensive way to gather data. Uh, but at the same time, there is no way to tell whether the sample is representative of the entire population or not. So, we cannot uh, produce generalized uh, results that is the disadvantage. And they are also at risk of uh, sampling bias and uh, selection bias. Now, similarly, uh, there is the volunteer response sampling. So, it is based on each uh, the access of the volunteers. So, rather than the researcher uh, selecting the participants, the participants volunteer themselves, maybe through responding to an advertisement or some phone call. So, uh, voluntary response uh, is somewhat biased because some people will inherently be more uh, vocal and more uh, participatory in nature and this may lead to self-selection bias. Now, purposive sampling as the name suggests uh, which involve the, uh, the uh, researcher to purposely selecting some samples. So, which is most useful to the purpose of the particular research. So, we will select those uh, samples. So, it is often used in qualitative research where the researcher wants to get some detailed knowledge uh, about a specific phenomena uh, rather than uh, making some statistical inferences or the population could also be very limited in those cases. So, for example, if we want to make our university campus wheelchair friendly, then we will purposefully uh, select a number of students or uh, staff who use a wheelchair to find out that what are their challenges or experiences in accessing the university infrastructure. So, uh, next is snowball sampling and if the population is hard to access in some cases, then this particular method is very uh, useful for recruiting participants through other participants. So, the number of people we have access to, so it is uh, sort of snowballs as we get in contact with more people. So, the negative of this method is that uh, uh, the researcher has no way of knowing that uh, how to, uh, how well this number represents the uh, population. Now, the main difference between probability and non-probability methods is uh, that in the probability method, we can use statistical uh, techniques and generalize the results on the whole population. But in the non-probability uh, method, uh, such generalizations are not possible. Uh, the reason being 
that statistics requires a sufficient number of participants. The third important point is relationship with the participant of the researcher. Now, relationship between the person who is conducting the interview and the person uh, who is being uh, interviewed or interacted with. So, it is very important that uh, the researcher should ensure that this relationship is very clear and professional and this understanding will help to clarify the nature of the study. The informed consent is intended to protect the interest of both the data gatherer and the data provider. So, the gatherer wants to know that the data that they are collecting can be used in their analysis uh, presented to uh, other parties and also it can be published. And on the other hand, the data uh, giver wants the reassurance that information will be kept uh, private and will not be used for other purposes other than the research purposes. So, uh, for example, the uh, they may want that the personal contact information should not be made public. The fourth uh, point uh, is triangulation. So, triangulation in research means using multiple data sets, methods, theories or investigators to address the research question. So, it is a research uh, strategy that can help the researcher enhance the validity and credibility of their findings and lessen or mitigate the presence of any research biases in their uh, work. So, triangulation is mainly used in qualitative research, but it can also be applied in quantitative research. So, if one decides on mixed method approach, then uh, methodological uh, triangulation uh, is more appropriate. So, we will see uh, th these methods uh, in the upcoming slide. So, the qualitative research is where we conduct in depth interviews with different groups of stakeholders uh, such as parents, teachers, children uh, depending on the problem that we are addressing. And in quantitative research, we can use um, equipments like eye tracking uh, and conduct some other experiments like ECG, EMG, etcetera to analyze the data. So, in the mixed method uh, research technique, we can conduct a quantitative and also a qualitative uh, study. So, it can be a combination of both. So, in the methodological uh, triangulation, we use different methods to approach the same research question. So, this is the most common type of uh, triangulation in and researchers often combine qualitative and quantitative research methods in a single uh, particular study. So, for example, we want to understand the purchase criteria and behavior of the nature of say teenagers and elderly on a, on a website, shopping website. So, we will recruit participate, uh, participants uh, in a behavioral control lab experiment and we will record the observations. So, we may also take uh, their eye tracking data and also uh, administer a survey to gather uh, their uh, feedback on choices and preferences in their daily lives. In uh, data triangulation, we use multiple data uh, sources to answer our research questions. So, we can vary our data collection across time, space or different people. So, for example, to understand the criterion behavior of elderly, uh, we can compile and analyze the data from a sample of 200 elderly people in for example, Roodki city over a period of 6 months. And we can repeat this experiment and co with comparable samples in different regions of the country. Investigator triangulation is where we involve multiple observers or researchers to collect uh, process and analyze the data separately. So, for example, for, a, uh, for our previous example teenage and elderly shopping behavior, we can involve multiple observers to see the uh, participants behavior and uh, investigate uh, the outcomes. So, investigator uh, uh, triangulation helps us avoid uh, risks uh, you know in terms of the biases that may be there. Theory triangulation uh, means 
applying several different theoretical frameworks in our research, instead of approaching a research question from just one theoretical perspective. So, for example, uh, people shop online to avoid on, uh, to avoid people uh, online shopping mode. And second, we can say that that people shop online because trying clothes in the comfort of their home is much easier. So, uh, when we have data from only one source or investigator, then it may became difficult to say whether the data is uh, trustworthy. But if data is from multiple sources or multiple investigators are involved, then uh, if the trends are similar, then we can be more certain of their credibility. So, triangulation helps us to get more complete understanding of the research uh, problem. The fifth important point is pilot study. So, a pilot study is a small trial run of the main study. In uh, any potential problem can be identified in advance, so that they can be uh, corrected. So, pilot study helps us uh, with the usability, acceptability of uh, an approach and can be used in a, a larger scale. So, data documentation. So, while data collecting, uh, there are several approaches that are used will depend on the goal of the study and how the data will be used, the context, the time and the resources that are available. Also, the sensitivity of the situation will also be important. So, the choice of data recording approach will affect the level of detail and how intrusive the data gathering will be. Generally, in most settings, audio recordings, photographs and notes are enough and sufficient. In some other data collection uh, methods, it may be essential to collect video data to get more detail and intricacies and uh, we can study it uh, at a later time as well. So, coming to interviews, uh, we have discussed interviews earlier as well in one of the previous lectures and interviews can be uh, thought of as a conversation uh, with a purpose. So, there are four main types of interviews, open ended or unstructured, structured, semi structured and group interviews. So, depending on the purpose of the interview, the questions to be addressed and the uh, in the interaction design activity, uh, one of the most appropriate approaches can be taken. So, unstructured interviews are exploratory in nature and are similar to conversations around a particular topic. So, these interviews often go into great depth, uh, questions asked by the interviewer are open and there is no particular expectation uh, about the format of the or the contact uh, content as well of the uh, answers. And despite being unstructured, the plan of the uh, interview needs to be prepared at what all areas need to be covered. So, the structured interviews, uh, the interviewer asks predetermined questions similar to those in a questionnaire and the same questions are used with each participant, so that the study can be standardized. So, the questions need to be short and clearly worded and they are typically closed questions. So, uh, what that means is that they require to answer uh, from a predetermined set of uh, alternatives that is provided. So, for example, the researcher uh, may ask that do you purchase online and the uh, answer could be yes or no. So, if the answer is yes, then the next uh, question can be which website do you shop from A, B or C and the next question can be how often do you purchase online every day, once a week, once a month and so on. So, uh, uh, semi structured uh, interviews combine features of structured and unstructured interviews and use both closed and open questions. So, the interviewer has a basic script or for, for his guidance, so that the same topics are covered uh, with each uh, interviewee. The interviewer starts with pre-planned questions and then probes uh, the interviewee uh, to say more about the questions until uh, there is no more relevant 
uh, information that can be gathered. So, for example, um, the interviewer can ask that do you purchase clothes online? So, the response can be yes. The next question can be which website do you shop? So, answer can be for example, Amazon. The next question will be why and uh, so the answer uh, could be that it is uh, you know I like Amazon. So, why? So, website is interesting, why? So, the layout and color palette is nice. So, and then the researcher can ask that is there anything else uh, nice about the website and so on. Uh, focus uh, group uh, there are generally 3 to 10 people who are involved and the discussion is led by a trained interviewer. The participants are selected to provide a representative sample of the target population. Uh, so, this method is more appropriate for investigating shared issues uh, rather than uh, individual uh, experiences or uh, problems. So, focus groups enable people to put forward their own perspective and uh, everyone is heard in the group. So, the session may be recorded and the participants may be invited for a one on one discussion at a later date. So, uh, we can take an example that in order to evaluate the uh, food of the hostel mess, we can have three different focus group discussions with students, uh, mess workers and administrators because uh, they all may have different concerns regarding the mess food. Now, planning and conducting an interview uh, involves the set of questions that need to be answered, collating any uh, document like consent form that is an important step, structuring the uh, interview and organizing the uh, suitable setting. So, here we can see some steps to be considered in order to conduct an interview. At the outset of uh, the interview, the interviewer should introduce themselves and explain why they are doing this exercise. And he should reassure the interviewer uh, regarding any issues and ask if uh, they mind if the interviewer records them. Uh, additionally, they should also ask for uh, take questions which are shorter and split questions if they are much longer into two or more for ease of understanding. So, the main session should be designed uh, where the questions are in a logical sequence with more probing questions towards the end of the interview. At the end of the interview session, the interviewer thanks the interviewees. Now, next method which is question is, is an established technique for collecting data and users opinions. So, questionnaires are similar to interviews in which that they can have closed or open ended questions. Also, once the questionnaire is uh, prepared, it can be distributed to a large number of people. More data can be collected faster as compared to conducting interviews and uh, participants who are in far away locations or they are unable to attend the interview can also submit their opinions and their feedback. Questionnaires require effort to be a useful tool as we need to be clear in the wording of the questions, so that the responses may be analyzed efficiently at the end. If the question uh, questionnaire is carefully designed, then researcher can gather uh, useful answers from a large pool of uh, respondents. And similar to the uh, interview questionnaire can also be prepared uh, structured or unstructured. Uh, researcher will not be uh, available to clarify the question. So, it is difficult to uh, design a good questionnaire. And another important thing is that the questions that are asked are free from any type of ambiguity and the user is not tempted to uh, you know select answers such as neutral or no opinion or get distracted. So, some ways to incorporate clarity is to include uh, check boxes, uh, ranges, and uh, uh, rating scales and also Likert scale. So, observation is useful is important at any stage of product development. When the design is in the early stage, the observation uh, helps designers understand the user's uh, context, tasks and their goals. At a later stage uh, of the development, the observation can be used to 
uh, investigate how well the prototype is uh, working and uh, fulfilling the tasks and goals. So, users may be observed directly by the investigator or uh, indirectly. So, uh, indirectly can be through records of uh, activity which can be studied later on. Observation can take place in the field or in a controlled environment. In the field observation, individuals are observed as they move about their day to day tasks in the natural setting. So, in a controlled observation, individuals are observed uh, uh, performing a specified uh, task within a controlled uh, environment like a usability lab for example. So, it can be difficult for people to explain uh, what they do or describe accurately how they achieve a task and uh, uh, interviews and observation uh, interviews and questionnaires may not be uh, uh, sufficient. So, observation helps here. Uh, in the field the observation can help fill the, gale, uh, the, the gaps that how technology can be used. But it can be complicated in the field because it is difficult to uh, observe in the natural setting and it can also be tedious to analyze the final results. So, uh, some examples are here of direct uh, observation uh, conducted by researchers in various uh, settings. So, depending on the type of study, the degree of particip uh, the participation and the space where it is uh, being conducted. So, uh, we can characterize the, uh, in the observer as insider or outsider. So, the one who is studying the behavior of uh, a child uh, uh, from afar is at the outsider spectrum and will be a passive viewer. But, uh, uh, the wild, wildlife biologist say for example, Jane Goodall who spent her life uh, observing the behavior of gorillas would be an insider. So, she will be looking at it from the inside perspective as an observer. Sometimes direct observations are not possible uh, because they may be too intrusive or observers cannot be present uh, over the duration of the study. So, activities are tracked indirectly. Uh, so, we can look at diaries or interaction uh, logs which provide information. Other methods uh, can be tracking the activities of users or analyzing from surveillance cameras can also uh, help. Uh, other documents like medical records, uh, patient charts, newspapers, uh, videos, uh, interviews can also uh, provide uh, useful information to the researcher. Uh, conducting face to face interviews and in focus groups can be time taking and can be impractical as well. But with the uh, prevalence of uh, uh, you know Skype, uh, uh, Webex all these uh, platforms, now it has become very uh, easy and remote interviewing has become quite popular. So, these are carried out in a similar uh, way as the interviews, but poor uh, connection and acoustics uh, can prove to be a challenge. and participants may lose their uh, interest in between and can get distracted. But there are uh, other uh, benefits that the participants can be at their home and in the comfort of their homes and the travel time can be reduced and anonymity can also be maintained. So, uh, today we saw how each technique of data gathering has some advantage or disadvantage. So, they can uh, also be some other uh, practical issues like the focus of the study. So, what type of data is needed or the participants um, uh, location. So, where are they located? Are they available for the study or nature of the technique? So, will the researcher require any type of special training or assistance uh, and also the available resources? So, is there enough time and money available? So, for example, questionnaires are good at answering uh, specific questions and can be utilized for quantitative and qualitative studies. They also have the advantage of reaching many people at once uh, who have low resources, uh, but can still provide the answers. At the same time, the design is very important as the response rate can be low. So, uh, unless it is carefully designed, uh, the response may not provide uh, enough data for us to uh, analyze. 
So, with this we come to the end of today's lecture. In the next lecture, uh, we will see some data analysis techniques. Thank you, see you in the next class.